Hey guys, just a reminder, this is not official medical advice or such. Please seek an appointment with a licensed medical provider. Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you with a weekly Common Sense MD. Today I'm going to talk about something that's really interesting, revolutionary, really. It's, I'm going to call this microdosing of the GLP-1s. Everyone has heard about GLP-1s, starting with Ozempic, but actually they've been around for much longer than Ozempic. They've been around for 10 years. So we have this new class of drugs called GLP-1, which means glucagon-like peptide 1. And in addition, the GIPs have come into play. That stands for glucose-dependent insulinotrophic polypeptide, or some people just call it gastric inhibitory polypeptide. We're getting into detail here, though. You don't need that. Both are incretins. Now, what an incretin is is a hormone released from the gut after it gets food in it, after you eat. And it, what it does is stimulates insulin release from the pancreas. And they help regulate, of course, your blood sugars. That's why these drugs are developed for diabetes. The GLP-1 hormone is produced by the L cells in the small intestine and in the colon. Now, the GIP hormone is produced by the K cells in the first two parts of the small intestine. Both are involved in the regulation of your blood sugar after eating, which is why, of course, they were diabetic drugs. But funny thing they noticed, people lost a ton of weight on these drugs and they felt better. So the FDA approved them for diabetes and obesity. But most people think they're just, that they just enhance insulin secretion, suppress glucagon release, and slow down digestion. Now I want to give you the rest of the story. There's so much more than these. That's why I use them, quote, off-label for many purposes. And that's why I myself take a microdose of terzepatide, which is a combination of GLP-1 and GIP, which is the better alternative, in my opinion. More effective, less side effects. So I do a microdose of this, even though I'm not diabetic, I'm not obese. As for the lack of FDA approval for off-label microdosing or just using it for other reasons. Remember, the FDA regulates drugs. They do not regulate doctors. Thank God for that too, because half the medicines we prescribe are off-label across the board. Some people will tell me, hey, these drugs aren't natural. You know, just lose weight on your own. Well, to me, they are. They're almost holistic in a way because they make these natural gut hormones, they mimic them and make your body work better. And believe me, most people cannot do this on their own. I've been in medicine for a long, long time, and treating a lot of these conditions, especially obesity, is very, very tough to do it on their self. They just, to overcome their metabolic dysfunction is almost impossible for most people that have a problem. As a matter of fact, I predict most people will be on a form of these medicines pretty soon. Consider this, 35% of American adults are taking statins, which compared to GLP-1 and GIPs are vastly inferior, in my opinion. Can there be side effects from these drugs? Yes, like any drug. I've seen it all because I've prescribed them thousands and thousands of times. Nausea and constipation are the main ones. Remember, terzepatide, which is a weak GLP-1, but a strong GIP, means way less side effects and better weight loss in almost every comparison trial they've done. And soon there'll be a new drug, which I'm gonna call Triple G, because it has not only the GLP-1 GIP, but it also has something called a CGC. It inhibits glucagon receptors. It's called retitrutide. It's not FDA approved yet, but I predict it will be. So stay tuned for that one. Plus, they're working on oral forms of these combination drugs instead of the weekly shot, which reminds me of a couple of quotes from a longevity colleague of mine in Florida that I respect a lot. He calls these shots the weekly dose of accountability. This guy's a neurosurgeon. He also told me that it's the only class of drugs that have ever been made to treat the human condition. You know what I mean by the human condition? What it means to me is that the way most people 
metabolisms are nowadays and how insulin resistant that most people are, they just kind of automatically go to a life of convenience eating. That's what's evolved. It's kind of like it's a hormonal therapy, kind of like you think of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone replacement when you no longer make those and the many advantages of that. These things are mimic gut hormones and they help you overcome that metabolic syndrome of insulin resistance that most Americans have. It's in the 90% of Americans have insulin resistance. So it really gives many people a chance at a normal metabolism. And make no mistake, these are maintenance medications. Think of them like blood pressure medicines. Once you get on them, you stay on them. My strategy really is to get people to the dose that they feel the best on, either whether it's for diabetes, for weight loss, or for the many other reasons I'm going to mention in a minute. Then I'll work the way down and do microdosing. So that's kind of my strategy for this. For example, I myself take a very, very, very low dose of terzepatide. I take 0.75 milligram once a week. The normal low starting dose for this drug is 2.5 milligrams. So I think there's a big thing with this. Most people don't even know about microdosing, but my goal is to get you to the point where you are happy, comfortable, you've overcome some of these problems you have. And also it's very protective with certain conditions that I'm going to get to to in a minute but so I think that's a very very good strategy to use and I've used it I use it on myself so I'll tell you why I take it and why I think it should be used for many many people that besides obese diabetics number one the cardiovascular benefits major reduction in risk of major events like heart attacks and strokes Lowered blood pressure, improved lipid profiles, improved cardiac performance in people with heart injuries. Think of how many are out there with that. It also has neuroprotective effects. The GLP-1s cross the blood-brain barrier and may offer protection against conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. They reduce oxidative stress and inflammation, which is the main reason I take them. I began asking patients how they felt in general on these medications and a lot of them have told me they don't have nearly as much aching and pain in their joints and muscles and it's not just from the weight loss either it's pretty soon after they start taking it and of course they have improved glucose metabolism because I like to put the continuous glucose monitors on people and monitor and there's no doubt I've done it myself many times and it blunts the effect of when you eat popping your sugars up. Remember, they call Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes. So there's, a, there's a, probably a very good protective effect against these. Studies are out. Most of them look positive. Liver disease. GLP-1s, they reduce liver fat, improve liver enzymes, and are a good treatment for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I also use these drugs for PCOS and migraine headaches. They also reduce your risk of kidney disease. They improve sleep apnea, even before you lose all the weight on them. They're great for addiction treatment. Patients with drug and alcohol problems just don't crave them as much. They also improve mood and emotional well-being. Considering bone, studies are mixed on this, but no, most studies show positive bone remodeling with these. Again, you can lose muscle with these drugs, but not if you exercise and eat enough protein. Recent studies show that if you're anywhere near close to a ketogenic diet, which you should be on a low-carb diet anyway in most cases, in my opinion, you don't lose muscle. Consider the benefits of this. You're losing abnormal fat. As far as cancer, there are many obesity-related cancers, so it's kind of a no-brainer in that regard. The major problem with GLP-1s and GIPs are obtaining them. They're expensive. Unless you're a diabetic, insurance companies just don't want to cover these. That will eventually change, I predict, as more competition enters the market. They're even starting to give more reasonable cash prices for the branded names. But for off-label use, especially for the micro-dosing, I love the compounded versions of this. That's what I do. As long as you take it from a, from a U.S.-approved, tested compounding pharmacy, it's definitely more affordable. 
And if you microdose it, it's really not that expensive. So far, I haven't found the oral compounded GLP ones to be as effective as a shot. Stay tuned. So do your own research. But I found that this class of drugs is a game changer unlike any other that I've ever prescribed in my 40 years of practicing medicine. So if you are obese, if you are diabetic, if you have some of these other conditions that we treat off-label, or if you want to take them for just protective and well-being, consider looking into this. Uh, we do it every day at our office. We talk to a lot of patients. It's individualized. It's safe. We always talk about the side effects. We monitor you. And I found it to be very, very helpful, a real game changer for medicine like none I've seen before. So I hope this helps you. Any questions, please call us. Come see us. We're glad to help you out. I'll see you next week.